Welcome back, everyone, to the Zero K Lobster Roll Series Week Eight. We're into the second part of the winners bracket. <laughs> I would say winners quarterfinals, but we did one of the winners semis before the break, so we are going to be going on to Pudis and Winslot on Baron. The game has actually already started. I don't think they've actually gone into the the game proper. It's only been a couple of minutes, so they're probably just working on the pregame stuff. Maybe just built a few units. Shouldn't have missed too much. But yes, this this tournament is going fast. And indeed, there we go. Wins a lot. Going for bots. Just starting the build-up. And on the other hand, we have Cloak from Pudis. Who appears to be going a little more economical. Wins a lot apparently has their... Has the economic display open. They know which medley strategies to focus on. Although admittedly, Pudis... If they don't... It doesn't... I mean, it won't be the worst thing in the world. I mean... It's not a great payback time, but it's not worthless. It's just, you know, a bit more efficient to grab the 2.1. Like 1.8, 1.8, 2.1, 1.4, 1.8, 1.4. It's like the... That's sort of the optimal path, but it's also risky. It does appear that wins a lot might be going for it, though. And indeed, they are going for it. They're definitely going for the 2.1. Absolutely are looking at the Acon overlay to see how valuable these metal extractors are. So again, it's a matter of payback time, and I... Well, so far, Pudis has not had a payback yet. Close, though. It'll take 90 seconds, and... Well, 90 seconds is just passed in the game, so I don't think that's paid back yet. But... Winslot is not pushing the situation, so it's possible... Thanks to this one reaver, that Pudis will be able to hold on to that base as long as it takes for that to have the proper payback. And to be fair, Pudis does have an economic advantage over Winslot right now. It's minor, but it's there. And the gl oh, okay, ducks. Ducks are not going to have an easy time with that commander. And there's not really a whole lot really threatening Pudis' base. Those three ducks were it, and the Reavers have been, have been able to chase them off. Not seeing switch over to boys... I'm actually not sure what the plan is on Buddhist's part to deal with this. Getting Arshas eventually, but the question, of course, is how do you deal with these Reavers now? Already, two Glaze going down for free. Or, sorry, two Glaze. What am I saying? Ducks! Two Ducks going down for free. Looks like another one very likely might follow, and... Well, the Reaver... Dan playing dangerously, but it is alive! Got rid of six Ducks. Very efficient on the other Winslot's commander with the exact same weapon. Taking up Pudis' commander. However, Reaver coming along the side. Oh, no. Pudis' commander might still go down, but Winslot's commander won't last much longer. There's no defensive forces. Winslot's commander goes down. Pudis' commander survives for a brief second before getting shot by one last little... One last machine gun round, killing them. But Winslot, they have nothing to answer the with these... Reavers here. That that's those reavers can basically just mop the floor with Winslot's remaining forces. And not to mention, Winslot now, they don't have this reclaim field. Pudis setting up a storage just because why not? I guess is that their only conjurer? Yeah, it's their only conjurer. Okay, well, I guess that explains why they're setting up the storage front lines. Probably won't matter though. So, with that, there's the Reavers coming in, taking up the last few Metal Extractors, and this is why... This is Baron. This is... This is Baron. It's a... It's a very all-or-nothing map, honestly. If it, if it lasts more than five minutes, it lasts 20. But this will probably be over in five minutes. Winslot is certainly trying to rebuild quite quickly, but we're not seeing... Uh, Pudis... Once they get that Lotus up just to secure the reclaim field, they're going to be having 12 metal per second, or 13 metal per second on the reclaim. Wins a lot, throws in the towel, and that is looking like it'll be it. Oof. Well, that is... That is that. There it is with the... Do oh, yeah, that's nice dodging, actually. Good point there, Atostic. Very nice dodging out the Reavers, and that very nice dodging, along with this strong commander fight, gives Pudis 
the win. Moving on to fight the winner of Golda and Ted McFred, which is ongoing. Apparently. I I think. Is it? Oh, no, no, it's not. Golda's just hanging out here. Is Ted McFred here? It must be. They beat Madcraft earlier. Yeah, Blow and Madcraft are going at it right now in loser's bracket. Where the heck? Oh, what? Mm hmm. Well, we're gonna have to wait for Ted McFred here. Because that is wrong. <laughs> Goda was actually spectating this match. So we can just hop right into Goda and Ted McFred. It'll be the first match we actually get to do any map banning on, or see the map banning for. Just need to have Ted McFred pop in here. Ugh, I don't, they're in a different match. I'll have to go wrangle them, I guess. Where are they? Where the heck are they? can't spell. Sorry. You can't see it. I, I use the wrong form of your. I can't believe I use the wrong form of your. Whatever. Anyway. Oh, no. Gold apparently won Ted, beat Ted McFred already. My bad. I should go apologize to Ted McFred. Okay, so that's why Gold was hanging out. Okay, so I wow, okay. So we're having Gold versus Pudis. <laughs> that's Right. Okay. Was not updated as to that, but we are back to winner semis. Why put some, some semis? I'm gonna semifinals. So winner semis and winner semifinals now. It's two different parts of the Lava Troll series. Whatever. It'll just be winner's bracket part one, part two. I... That was just a weird opening. <laughs> Pick the one game that lasted half an hour. It lasted long enough for half of the winner's side bracket to be finished. Oh, my bad. Okay. Okay, so we are into the map bands. Finally, we have CCR. So CCR is actually Omni. CCR, Baron, Intersection, Frosty Cove, Shimmer Shore, Fallendale, and Firebreak are our seven maps for this weekend. And both CCR and Intersection have been removed from the running this match. Okay, Fallendale's out too. Buddha doesn't want to play on that. Frosty Cove. Google Frog's up! Hooray! We can get Google Frog in here. Awesome. Hey, Google Frog, how's it going? Hello? Hey. You're on. Okay, I see Best Alliance being pretty quick. Yeah, I, I mean, I, the first match I watched was half an hour long, and in that time, we got this lower part of the winner's bracket all the way to winner semis. So, it, yeah, yep. it, it took a while. <laughs> Or I should say the rest of the bracket didn't. But we're down to the last three maps. I'm not sure which ones are gonna be which one's gonna be picked out of these. Frosty Go, Shimmer Shore, and Firebreak. But it's up to Pudis. And they are going for Frosty Cove. Oops. So we're on to Frosty Cove this match. Oh, three match left though. It's banned to three the then. Same pick. Band down one. It's banned to three. It's been changed to band to three. It's like the last second. Okay. Yeah, or I was talking to Crow last night about the ban rule, and they were arguing that the having it be banned to one, but just auto banning the maps that had previously been played on ends up causing a weird winner's advantage situation they that they don't want. And I I still think the complication's not worth it, but 
they decided, okay, well, we'll keep the old rule, but just ban down to three, and then the lower bracket or loser of the previous round picks of the three. Which yep. isn't a, is a more sensible rule. I mean, it's still a complicated, but at least you're not going to have confusion. Anyhow, we are going to be going on to Frosty Cove, which is honestly, I think, a good choice. We saw it last time Golda, Golda could be pushed back in Frosty Cove against the right opponent. Like, Steel Blue nearly took them out. Yeah, matchmaker map too, so people should have practice playing it. I would think so. And Pudis... Okay, this is cheese. Gunship drop. Gunship start. Go to going for their standard jump bot start. That's normal. That's what Goda always goes from this map. But gunship opener. Pete's sake, reshade. Gunship opener is going to be. There we go. Gunship opener is into. Oh. Oh, that's why they. Okay. Pudis was asking earlier if Rook Rush was an allowed strategy in this tournament. And I mean, it's not banned. You can certainly try. I am going to be surprised if it works, but it's not, it's not forbidden. It's just a bad idea. Oh, crush. Yeah, you need to stun the commander to pick it up. Well, well we do have Nats coming in in the queue. Well, that was fixed. Yeah, but oh, yeah, Nats, Nats are in, so they, they know that. They, they got this sorted out. It's going to take them a couple minutes to get it set up, and in that time, Gord is going to be able to get some puppies, going to be able to scout that out. I mean, unless this puppy gets stopped before it gets anywhere near the gunship plant, and Pudis is not putting any effort into restricting information about their plans. Yeah, this ain't going to work so well. In fact, I'm, going to, I'm just going to look at what Gorda sees as they come up, and they see it. They see it. Her crush has been revealed. Goda knows everything that's coming their way. Should be seeing, I think, Mass Puppy. He's just going to I... run his commander now. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah. Get into the Lotus. It's Guardian against Recon. It is, that's but true. Yeah. Constable is pretty good against commanders if you have a mass of them. Oh, oh, I see. Pudis is dropping their commander rather than just stealing. Well, you can do both. Yeah, you could. You could you drop the commander, stun the other one, and then steal it away and throw it against a cliff. Because that's typically what you do. It's like it's like eagles hunting turtles. You just drop it until the shell breaks. Apparently. I actually don't know if that's entirely true. But at any rate. Buddhist does have their commander here. Safely dropping them to the ground with a couple nets to help support. Is that? There we it's go. Still a fair few lotus. That's a lot of lotus. That's that's possibly too much. Buddhist's commander trying to rapidly get their own lotus up, but yeah, they're running against thirty build power on lotuses. Although the yeah, Herc does have the lasers at least for a bit of harassment. I don't see Buddhist managing to get a whole lot out of this. The gnats, gnats are here. They aren't really managing to go in for anything, because, as you said, the Lotus is that's... That's not going to be able to get... Like, you're not going to be able to get anywhere with the Nats with the Lotuses like that. It does run some interference with the Herc, but it's not really enough. Yeah, Pyro coming up to go around the back, probably. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I won't have any problem being built up. So, Goldus Commander, under no real threat. Pudus with the... Okay, I do like the, what Pudis is up to here. At least setting up the Ooh, picket. He might be out of position. Yeah, it looks like. There it is. Herc being a little bit afraid to go for it, though. And I can't blame yeah, the them. probably kills it. Yeah, not to mention all the, lo all the Lotuses that are there idea. for support. He's got to abduct his own commander now. I think you're right. Oh, yeah, that Stinger's going to kill or it. Or just walk away. Uh, walking away works. The Stinger's not that. Yeah, but Pudis isn't doing that. Pudis is keeping themselves in a very dangerous position when it comes to their commander right now. Nah, no, he's walked away sufficiently. Okay, that's true, that's true, but it's it's close. 
building up an Nimbus back. Oh, it's a good transition. Sure about that. I I know I can see it because a lot of lotuses. Any other either you have to switch factories completely, which means building a wasp, or you build a Nimbus just to deal with the lotus from range. There's no other gunship unit that really would be able to take off, except maybe a revenant. Yeah, but then God A gets a razor or two, and that's that. That's true. Assuming they even need that much, but that's the only thing I can think of. Surely you've got to make a wasp now. Oh. I don't know. I think they're going all in on this. Keep an eye on the factory, though. Hercules, I think, dies if it doesn't get repaired. Ah! Yep, it's... Oh, there it goes. Okay, just getting the fire spit. Even with repairs? No, even with repairs, it's done. Well, it is quite expensive for its cost. For its health. Yeah, no kidding. Well, that leaves Golda's commander quite safe, and Pudis in a really bad position. Although there is, there's the wasp. Nope, never mind. Oh, it's a revenant. Nope, it's a Nimbus. Nimbus. Pudis having a hard time making up their mind as to what to build, but either way, Golda... Like, the real threat isn't there. And honestly, at this point, Gota's commander isn't as... I mean, it's still relevant, but I don't think it would have been... It's not as strong now as it would have been right when it started. Still, that's an Nimbus, and... We'll see what happens with Gota's commander. Buddhist's commander... Command is going down with that slow damage. Yeah, Buddhist won't be able to really fight back. Nim... Both could die. No, well, Gota's commander's going to die after, if anything. And there's the jump. The Nimbus well, can't really get a whole lot. On whether you can get vision on this jump to hit it with the Nimbus. Right. No, it doesn't matter. Pudis throws in the towel, and that is Gorda moving on to the winner's finals. Because Pudis went for cheese, and cheese... Hey! We have it, so I'm when cheese failed. People were asking about that. It's like, hey, do we ever win cheese failed compilation for 0k? And it's like, no, no one ever cheeses. When are we going to see a failed cheese? Right now, that's when... There's factory swaps sometimes. Uh, that's true. That usually I find happens, though, off of air, though. Like, you go in for air or gunship, and then you swap out after they've swapped, swapped into anti-air. Yeah. But anyway, that... Yeah, could he be expanded behind that? Uh, Pudis? A wasp instead of that Nimbus. Well, maybe. I mean, they've forced Gota to make, like, 2,000 metal worth of... No, 2,000 metal. 1,000 metal worth... 600 metal worth of lotuses. I'm exaggerating. But, no, I was right the first time. 1,000 metal worth of defenses. So, Gota had spent quite a lot on just static defense in, right in their main base. Pudis could have used that and turned that into a wasp and then expanded from there and then built up normally. That's really a wasp plus a factory to switch would have been the same cost as all those defenses that Gota had built. Yeah, and the wasp could... Well, a pari would get out and raid the defense. This is the only issue you have to worry about. True, but the point is that the cost is still fairly even at that point. Yes, and you get to expand. Right. And kind of get to back off from the situation, especially if the Herc had pulled Pudis' commander back or maybe raided a little more, but not with an eye to killing. Just give up on the killing idea, move back, maybe take out a few metal extractors here or there, as the Herc had been doing, and then just... Just have a slow tactical retreat to make sure no pyros can easily get out of the of Gulda's base while Pudis rebuilds behind the attack. It would have been tricky, but I could see that working. Yeah, and the moderator puts uh, them on a clock. Right, yeah, that's true. Which I don't think so Pudis, Pudis realized. So invest in some defenses at some point to stop that from happening. Yeah, I mean, granted, it put them on a clock as far as the attack went in the first place. And the commander got destroyed because of that moderator. Well, that was that. So again, we're on to the winners' finals, and it's going to be Gorda and Randy up against each other because they have won their respective sides. Because that's how tournaments work. All right, so we are on to already on the map band phase for them. Best of one. Best of one. Firebreak has been removed from the pool. And yeah, best of one for everything but grand finals. 
Grand Finals is the and Grand Finals reset are the only best of three rounds. Everything else is best of one. So we will be having potentially more wonkiness for the remainder of the tournament up until Grand Finals. Also, as far in the lower bracket, wins a lot, blow it, Pudis and Dying Thrine have managed to advance fairly far. The Winslot and Ten McFred are going to be fighting as Dying Thrine afterwards, so that's going to be tough. Who's with Winslot, Ten McFred? Hmm? Oh, all right. Yeah, they're Ten in the, down there. Yeah, they're in the lower bracket. Sorry, it's not actually very clear on stream. So yeah, that's the lower bracket I'm talking about. I must be having a... Uh, Ted McFred Winslot seems to just be starting, possibly. It does. Maybe they just ended. It, but I'm not going to do that because we're... I do the lower bracket after yeah, the winner's bracket. Looking at the bracket. Fruity and FCC started two minutes ago. Okay. So That'll it could be... be a while between the winner's final and the grand final. That's not surprising. I expect we'll be going from the, I guess, round four challenge calls at the loser's quarterfinals all the way to the loser's Kenneth finals. And five break, intersection, Baron, and common catcher. Okay. So, Frosty, Shimmers, or Fallendale? Probably Fallendale. Wait. Frosty is what's picked. Yep. Okay. Another match on Frosty Cove. Probably not going to see the same shenanigans with the Hercules. Probably. But no guarantees. Yeah, especially since they're... Um, I see how it goes down. We practiced in dealing with it. Yeah, but at the same time, Randy might feel there some confidence in going for it and then turning it around into a proper game. So with that, we have jump. Well, yep, go to shield. Oh, okay, that's spider. Sorry, spider. Oh god, he started to jump last time. He's probably going to do the same kind of thing. Oh, go ahead starts to jump on Frosty Cove every time. I have never seen him not go for jump on Frosty Cove. That is interesting. I can understand with the cliffs and everything, but it's not that cliffy. Well, there is this cliff down the lower right. That's which true. Which can't with pyros, which is quite nice. And the lake can be ready, they can do that. The lake can be clear with pyros too. Yeah. Yeah, there are way places you can go. That is true. I mean, Constable is quite a nice builder. Right for defense and everything. Yeah, because it's slow beam. It's like one of two builders that actually deals damage. Yeah. Well, seven damage per second, real damage. I mean, that's more than most. That's even. The, that's more than most. Okay, everyone's going quite economic. Three constructors from Gotti with two big constructors from Randy. That is surprising. Especially since they aren't really moving out to build up a lot. Granted, on this map, I expect a lot of reclaim to happen. Yeah, it makes sense. This map... People have learned to not try and raid so much here. Yeah, it's tough to get in the it's quite ramps at the start. Yeah, it's easy, it's hard to get in on the ramps. It's a lot of uphill fighting. I mean, you have the valley right in the middle. That's that always makes it hard to raid. Yeah, although you can cross that at the start, but you know you can send a pyro in, and they probably have to respond with more than the pyro costs. It just takes a while for the pyro to get to the other side of the map. I usually see when that happens. May as well do all this reclaim. Yeah, I usually see when that happens. It's any raid that happens happens along the back path. There's just less high ground, and the high ground that's there, or the high ground change, the ramp, is farther away from the main base. 
Mm. So oftentimes I'll see people with pyros jump over the lake and then go around the back, or just in general, just sweep around the back. Oh, I think Randy recently learned you can hold control while reclaiming to only reclaim rocks, not trees. I thought like game that changer. was default. Like if you had trees and rocks in the same reclaim, you would always just reclaim the rocks. Uh, I think it prioritizes them, yeah. They might not be a perfect priority, maybe just says if it's close. Okay, because my experience has been that if you try to reclaim rocks and trees, you can't time. reclaim trees. You certainly cl can't queue a bunch of area reclaims. Because you'll take the trees once the rocks are gone. Oh, uh, right, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, God is really coming down the left side. This is, is the thing, yeah. As is Brandy on the other side, getting a toehold in the other person's uh, area. And not expanding in the very back so much. Well, that'll be kind of scary. But this is exactly what I was talking about with the pyro coming around here by Golda. Going around the back, which Randy has already prepared for. Yeah, you got to flee with vision. Two venoms are sort of stopping it. And well, that, if you're playing spiders, that is the thing you got to do. Is make sure you have the information. Because you have a lot of ways oh, to get... Randy and Gotti just made a lotus at the same time. With their commanders in the same spots. <laughs> Well, they know how to play this now, that's for sure. Yeah, it's been in the pool for a while. People have an idea about how to expand. Yep. Oh, Venom. Venom killing off one of the pyros. The other pyro able to escape, but looks like Brandy might be able to hold that back line of his own base. And indeed, Weavers are coming around the back to expand there as well. While also expanding along this eastern side here. Okay, being yeah, on. Brandy going more into units. Indeed, though Randy flying a bit too close to the sun when it comes to their... than God, eh? Yeah, which will help when taking this western side of the map, but that Venom... That was a lot of damage for those Venoms. That was not ideal. Same time, though. There's a no, potential Randy opening. A spy. Wait, what? So a Widow coming in. Oh, yeah. A bunch of pirates around. I don't know how much good that'll do right now, but I expect that's going to be information for the moment and then, you know, eventually kill the commander. Or if there's, like, any big units. Yeah, the pirates get out of position. Oh, three pirates coming in the back. Quite scary. Yep, and there's just a weaver to stop them. Got to to make defenses with it. That's nah, not going to happen. Three that, venoms. That's going down. The venoms will be able to stop one of the pirates, but the, if, if that, but the rest should be able to escape. Uh, one is damaged. Not one. To, oh, jump to his death. Two down. Third Venom one. Is quite good on defense, at least. It is, and that's helpful right now. But, man, Randy is kind of on the back foot. But admittedly, that's coming in here with the commander. Able to save the day. Oh. Whoa! Was that on hold? That wasn't hold fire. That was intentional. Yeah, he went for that. I guess the widow got away. There was a lone pyro. I mean, it makes sense. Unfortunately, no follow-up forces. Uh, didn't help all that much. No, I'm afraid not. Okay. Gode is convinced Randy that the lower battlefield is the big one. With all the forces going there. Maybe he's going for a com snipe. Oh, uh, good point. I mean... Gode's being pretty good against defending that. Oh. And Venom doesn't do all that much damage. No, it does get rid of the Pyro, but it's cost of its own life. Sorry, the Widow gets rid of the Pyro that causes its own life. The Venom's just come in here and completely wreck face. And the Commander... Okay, now the Commander's under some threat. There it is, the Commander... is done, but it's a long way from... Oh. No, it's it's not happening. It's done to death. Thankfully, the Pyros are very helpful for Randy. Golda's Pyros are very helpful for Randy. Killing at least one Constable. Leaving another one also dead. So, all the Constables are dead, thanks to the Pyros. So Randy should thank Randy's him. Randy's coming in. But there's a jack. Maybe we'll kill the commander. Two jacks, actually. That's a recon commander. It can jump away. It can, but it will not advance more. Unless that jack is dealt with. Which, a jack probably takes a lot of damage into three lotuses, though. Or it, yeah, so far 2,000 hasn't taken a single lotus yet. Going for Randy's commander. Randy goes to the jump. And that, lo that jack is just done. Ooh. Five lotuses all at once. Jack would 
the jack would have um, jumped away and repaired, hopefully. Well, that second jack might have a chance to do so. So one thing Gorda has the gone for them. Rounds just a bit speedy, though. Ah, uh, I mean, that's the point, yes. <laughs> also, I think this one might have... No, it doesn't. It doesn't actually have the the speed upgrade, the servos. It's got, uh, it's got a blade of armor. Which... So more health upgrades to yeah. solve some of the downside. It might not be enough, oh, though. Man. Ram's commander jumping and now stuck against the jack. Your Venom's coming to try to save the day. Oh, it's Ooh. risky. They stun oh, the commander instead. And that's it. Randy throws in the towel. Losing their commander like that is just too demoralizing. They figure they can't take this. And that is the winner's finals. Gorda taking it just barely. And there were two constables around the top just building pickets into those lasers slowly coming in. Well, that's true, but that's... Oh, yeah, it's true over the north or north no, that east. The, yeah. The north side probably falls to Gutty and then it's two-thirds of the map against a third. Right. And at that point, yeah, Randy wouldn't have a, as that much of a chance. Oh, that is painful, though. That, that ill-timed jump, letting the jack come in and punish it. Yeah, the brute force of the jack beating the... Finesse of the Widow. Well, I mean, unfortunately for that Widow, it just got caught out by the Pyro. If it had managed to get to the Commander, I think there would have been a yeah, chance. Yeah, well, the Pyros were screening it very well. They were. That was a really good play. That's exactly the play that Gorda needed. And with that, yeah, Gorda goes on to the Grand Finals. So we'll be... We'll be catching up with that after getting through the lower bracket, but we'll be having a short break, and then swapping into the lower bracket after that, once I decide to get back from break. Honestly, it'll probably be the loser's round of 16, or the whatever the blow FFC one is called. I don't know what to call these rounds anymore. Channel launches round naming is weird. Anyway. We still have FCC and RTW Fruity. What? That was that was finished. FFC won. They are against Blow now. Oh, okay. The name isn't updated. Yeah. Yeah, FCC's fighting Bloa. Winslot's fighting Ted McFred. I don't know how far along they are, but we'll see. Anyway, for now, short break. Be back. At least with the loser's quarterfinals. Possibly earlier. Oh, wait, that was winner's finals. Crap. Did that again. <laughs> 